Okay, so starting at the top here, it says state the postulate that can be used to show that each statement is true. The first statement says that planes J and K intersect at line M. So here is plane J, and here is plane K, and they do intersect right here at line M. What makes that statement true is two planes intersect at a line. So this is just a practice test, like a sampling of questions. So you may get the same exact question, you may get something similar on the test. What I would do is just like consider what this question is like, and it's from these postulates. It's from this one, two planes intersect at one line. Um, so you may want to study all of these just in case you get a similar but different question on the test. The next one, it says, choose the property that justifies the following statement. If x equals 2 then uh, and x plus y equals 3, then 2 plus y equals 3. So they took the x equals 2 and they plugged it in for x in that statement, and that would be substitution. Okay. Then choose a property that justifies this statement. Measure of angle A equals measure of angle A. When something's equal to itself, that is reflexive property. And then for the next one, choose the property that justifies the statement GH is congruent to FD, then FD is congruent to GH. That is symmetric property. And of course, consider like how else they might ask this. They might ask about transitive property um, or any of the properties. Maybe, oh, sorry. Just looking at these, like distributive property, um, addition, subtraction, multiplication. So just be familiar with all of them, depending on what comes up. Then the next question. Um, use the figure below to answer the following questions. And it says measure of angle 1 right here is 3x plus 15. Measure of angle 2 right here is 6x plus 3. Find x. Well, those are vertical angles, so therefore vertical angles are congruent. Um, so we can set those expressions equal to each other and solve for x. So 3x plus 15 equals 6x plus 3. And we will solve. Okay, number six, it gives us a diagram. Um, it says if measure of angle ABC is 34, so first thing I would do is identify that angle and just connect these dots ABC. Okay, so this angle right here is 34 degrees. Find CBD, so it wants to know what this angle is. Well, those two angles come together to form a 90 degree angle. So the way to solve that would be 90 minus 34 equals 56 degrees. And again, consider like what variation you could get of that problem. So for example, maybe the two angles are a linear pair, and you have to know that linear pairs equal 180. So if you're given like this is 150 degrees, then this would have to be 30 degrees to equal plus this equals 180. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the proofs. There are a total of nine proofs here. There'll, there will be five on your test. Um, the five that will be on your test are from this worksheet. So if you know how to do all of these, then you'll be able to ace the test easily. Um, so let's start with the first one. I'm gonna zoom in. Um, I know that it's kinda hard to see some of these like answer bank type things. It's because my printer is no buenos. Whoa. 
printed it off of my printer and then I made copies, but my printer, I don't know what's going on with the toner. I had the toner replaced, but it's still printing really light, so I don't know. Okay, anyways, to maximize our score on these proofs, I would always start by filling in the given and the proof statement. So the first line right here should be the given. So our reason, given. And then our given right here, I'm just going to plug it in here. And then the proof statement will go in that last spot. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Okay, so just doing that, I got over half the points on this question. Um, then I'm going to look at the next statement. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 2. I'm going to look at the diagram to see their relationship. Angle 3 and 2 are vertical angles. So they are equal because of vertical angle theorem. And then I have one left. You could fill that in, but of course make sure it makes sense. They're saying 1 is equal to 3, 3 is equal to 2. So then 1 and 2 must be equal. That is transitive property. Okay, next. Up to the top here. Okay, complete the following proof. I'm going to zoom out so I can do the whole thing. Okay, um, so starting out, just put the given right here and then the proof statement right here to just maximize your point. So I'm going to put AB is congruent to DE. And yes, I'm writing it because I'm also making sense of what it says. B is midpoint of AC and E is midpoint of DF. Okay, so making sense of what that says in regards to the picture, it says that AB is congruent to DE. Cool, those are equal. And then it also says that B is a midpoint here, so then AB would equal BC. And then E being the midpoint here, this would equal this. Okay, then for this statement, it says AB is equal in length to DE. They told us it was congruent, now they're saying it's equal. That is definition of congruent segments. By the way, all of these will be like drag and drop, so you won't have to like type anything in. Um, this question, if it's on the test, we'll have a bank. Um, then it says definition of midpoint. Let's see. B is the midpoint of AC, so therefore AB would equal BC. So that's what they're looking for there. AB equals BC, and then DE equals EF, since E is the midpoint of that other segment. Okay, now they start substituting stuff. Um, here it says AB equals DE. Um, since AB equals BC, they just plug that in. So that would be a substitution. They substitute again. Since DE equals EF, they substituted EF into this one. Substitution. You could also call that transitive. It depends on what they have in the box, like the answer box. Then last one. Our proof statement right here will go here. We could have pl plugged that in at the beginning, or maybe we should have. And then this is equal, so it's congruent definition of congruent segments. Okay, next one. Um, again, maximizing my score, I'm going to start with plugging in the given. Reason, given, and AB congruent to CD. BC is congruent to DE. 
And then at the same time, I'm also going to put this proof statement in the last spot because I know I can get points for that too. Okay, I might, another good practice is to look at what it's talking about in regards to pictures. So A, B is congruent to C, D and BC is congruent to DE. And it wants you to prove that this whole thing is equal to this whole thing. Okay. Um, this here, the reason is definition of congruent segments. So that would be AB equals CD and BC equals DE. So if they're congruent, they're the same length. And it's just written in like that. Then the next one. It says A, B, A, B plus B, C equals the whole thing. That's second addition postulate. And same over on the other side. C, D plus D, E equals this whole thing. Second addition postulate. this point, they start substituting. They actually take this right here, and since AB equals CD, they plug in CD, and since BC equals DE, they plug in DE. So that is substitution. Then they say EC equals AC, so since CD plus DE equals EC, they plug that in for this to get this. Um, so substitution. And last but not least, to go from equal to congruent, definition of congruent segments. Am I going too slow, too fast? Just right. I don't know. Good. Okay. If I need to speed it up or something, let me know. Okay. Next. This one's really faded, but we'll make it work. Okay. Um, this given, obviously I'm not going to be able to cram that whole thing. So just this one time, we can draw a circle and draw an arrow. On the other ones, we're going to write it because it helps you learn it. Hello. Got it, so I'll see you in a second. Okay, yep, bye. Okay. So given goes here, I'm gonna make sense of the given as well. Um, C is the midpoint of AE, so that means this would be equal to this. C is the midpoint of BD, so this would be equal to this. And then they also say that AE is equal to BD. So this length is equal to this length. Okay. Um, so let's see where we're going with this. If C is a midpoint, then AC equals CE and BC equals CD. So that would be definition of midpoint. And then AE equals BD. Um, they tell us that those are congruent, and now they're saying that they are equal. So that would be definition of congruent segments. By the way, after we're done with this, I'm going to go around and just give you credit for writing everything I wrote. Um, segment addition postulate, that's the one that says like this part of the segment plus this part equals the whole thing. So that would be that, okay, AE, let me give myself some more room, AE equals AC plus CE, and BD equals BC plus CD. Okay, then from here they start substituting. Since AE equals BD, then they put this side of the equation equal to this side of the equation. So substitution. Then 
then they use substitution again since AC equals CE. They plug in AC and likewise over here. So substitution is, I know it's hard to see on this one. Then they combine like terms. There's two ACs here. AC equals 2CD. Simplify. Then they divide both sides by 2 to get AC equals CD. Division property. And then to go from equal to congruent, it would be definition of congruent segments. Next one, um, just maximizing points, start by plugging in given, and write the given here, angle one and angle two, linear pair, and then angle one is congruent to angle three. And then I'm also going to plug in the proof statement because I know I can get points for that as well. Three R supplementary. Okay, so 1 and 2 are a linear pair, and it says 1 and 2 are supplementary. Um, since they're a linear pair, they're supplementary. That is either the supplement theorem, or in this case, they call it linear pair postulate. And like I said, different textbooks call it a little bit of a different name sometimes. Um, as long as you're comfortable with the vocabulary, you can usually figure it out, supplement theorem. So linear pair postulate or supplement theorem, same thing, depending on what resource you're looking at. So if you have a linear pair, they're supplementary. If they're supplementary, they add to 180. So angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180 degrees. Okay, then they say measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 3. We know this because it said 1 and 3 are congruent, and if they're congruent, their measure is equal. That is definition of congruent angles. Then from there, if 1 is equal to 3, they take 3 and plug it in for 1 in this equation to get this. So that would be substitution. And then, last but not least, if 3 plus 2 is 180, then they are supplementary. That is definition of supplementary angles. Um, given, always plug that in first, get points for that. Okay, so if LK is congruent to NM, KJ is congruent to MJ, then it says definition of congruent segments, and LK equals NM, and KJ equals MJ, if the length is equal. Then they have this. So what they did here was um, they added KJ to this side of the equation and MJ to this side. And since these are equal, you're adding the same thing to both sides. And that satisfies addition property. Then from here, the reason says segment addition postulate. So I'm looking at this here and saying, okay, segment addition postulate means that the, this whole segment equals this part plus this part. So I could say that, J, let's see, JN or NJ, I don't know which order, to do, JN equals JM plus MN. 
and then over here JL or LJ equals JK plus KL. Then they used substitution since this equals this. Then they said, okay, this equals this. LJ equals NJ substitution. And then from equal to congruent would be definition of congruent segments. Am I making this look easy? I'm sorry. What's that? Which this thing? Yeah. It is on the end. JL equals JK plus KL. Okay, I'm ready. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> it is Wednesday, the twenty seventh. Okay. At the top. Um okay, you've seen this one on the homework. Again, maximizing the score, I'm gonna start by putting the given in there. Given PA equals LN, and then the prove will go in this last part. And you just got like half of your points, which is cool. Okay, then the next statement here, it says PL plus LA equals PA. I'm going to look at the image to see what it's saying. It's saying, okay, PL plus LA equals the whole thing. That is segment addition postulate. Segment addition postulate. And then the next one, they said that LA plus AN equals LN. That is segment addition postulate again. Okay, and then from here, PA equals LN, PA and LN. So since PA equals LN, then they set these two equal to each other. So substitution, so if they had transitive in the bank, we might have put that, but they don't. Substitution. And then for this one, to get to this step, they subtracted LA from both sides. So that would be a subtraction property. Okay, then this one right here. Um, one and three are complementary, two and three are complementary. Of course, right, given in here to get those points. Then they say, okay, 1 plus 3 is 90, and 2 plus 3 is 90. So because they're complementary, they add to 90 degrees. That's definition of complementary angles. Then, since they're both equal to 90, they actually just set those two equal to each other. So that would be... Um, substitution or transitive substitution is what they gave me in the answer bank to get this then from there it says reflexive property which is kind of random but I look at the answer choices and this is definitely a reflexive property measure of angle 3 equals measure of angle 3 Then to get to this step here, what they did was take this equation here and they subtracted measure of angle three from both sides. And that would leave you with just measure of angle one equals measure of angle two. So subtraction property. And then if they are equal, then they are congruent. That's definition of congruent angles.
Last one, y'all. So, plugging in the given in the proof statement just to maximize our points. Given goes here. I'm going to write the given right here. B, D, bisects, angle A, B, C. The proof statement will go in the last box. And so I just got half of the points. Okay, so three, it says that B, D right here. Let's see, bisects A, B, C. So therefore, this part of the angle will be the same measure as this part because a bisector breaks an angle exactly into two pieces. So it says one is congruent to two. Um, that is because of definition of angle bisector. Then it says that 1 is congruent to 3, and I look at the relationship on here. 1 and 3 are vertical angles, so they are equal because of vertical angle theorem. And then last but not least, um, if 1 is equal to 2 and 1 is equal to 3, then 2 and 3 must be equal. That is transitive property. Okay, so, um, good job with that. Now, if you don't have full credit on your homework from the last two days, I would definitely recommend going back to those, um, putting in these answers and getting full credit on it. Um, also, I'm setting those homeworks to have eight attempts instead of five, so if you want to use the homeworks to study, you definitely should, because all these are from the homework, and then five of them will be on your test. So just, if you know all of them, then you'll ace the test. Um, there'll be five proofs, and then there'll be ten of the other like properties or postulate questions and it'll be really straightforward so leave this out so i can give you credit for it there's 12 minutes left in class but we don't have the laptop cart so you can use your phone to either redo your homeworks from the last couple days or work on alex or whatever you need to do